Thank the Lord. Hey, thanks for joining us here today on the program. And we're doing uh, creating a new man in the image of Christ, in the image of the Son of God, Jesus. He came down to earth to deliver us, save us from the, uh, the curse, the fallen state of Adam. You know, the first Adam fell into transgression and uh, there was a curse and they broke the relationship or broke the covenant and there was a uh, need to be an atonement. But Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, came back to re what? redeem God's family, me and you, redeem us back, bring us back into the family of God. God created us, Adam and everyone in this world to have what? A relationship, fellowship with the living God, almighty God. We're just going to flip to the other camera here. We're just going to check this out. Got the other camera here. Just, this is the, the mobile phone. Want to see, see how it works there, see? Got the uh, mobile phone, a little echo there. We'll fix that at another time. But we also want to promote that we are having Barnabas night at the church. Well, actually, due to the snow conditions, we're having it on the Zoom. We have the Zoom information here. Zoom meeting ID. You should be able to see that there. It's on the Facebook. Just look up Barnabas Ministry. And um, Pastor Barbara actually posted this one here. So if you want to join us tonight, we're going to have some uh, prophetic words, uh, utterances, um, prayer, deliverance. I just want you to be touched by the presence of God. God so loved the world. God is so full of mercy and kindness. It's the goodness of God, right? Is that what they say? It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And what it is, it's repentance really means God wants to restore us into the full relationship, full covenant blessings. He doesn't want to hold anything back. No limitations with God. It's fixed. They say it's fixed. You can't fail. With God, nothing's impossible. So I just got this little teaching. I shared some with the men. We got a men's group at the Wednesday night, uh, usually twice a month. We just had a breakfast on the 13th Saturday at nine o'clock at the church. Really uh, wonderful time. Just uh, people just the men didn't want to leave. Well, we had food too, but still, uh, you want to come down if you had, just give me a shout. You know, on the uh, Facebook and uh, or comment on the. Uh, Google, uh, YouTube, yeah. So creating a new man in the image of Christ, the Son of God. So we are what? A new species, a new kind of man. He's not fixing the old. The old man died, fell into sin. It's a fallen state, a fallen nature. It, it, it has to be created new. That's why Jesus told what? Nicodemus. You must be born from above. And he said, how can I be born again? I'm, I'm 40 years old, 50 years old. We are to be a reflection, a bearer of the image of the risen Christ. Christ died to pay the penalty, <clears throat> suffered the death so that he could. Now we can be born into the new covenant that Christ redeemed us into now. To a back into fellowship with God the Father. Because the first covenant was broken. But now a new covenant is created with a new relationship. We are being invited into a what? Eternal life. No longer death. See what happens is. I heard someone explain this very. Oh it was just wonderful the way they talked about it. That let's say for some reason you're. At your last days, you know, some people just, just just leave this earth, you know, at night. It's not always a sickness. You know, when the spirit leaves the body, the flesh, the old man is gone. But we're not gone. We're moving on to heaven or eternal life because eternal life lives in us. So he was describing that when you're in the bed and when that person ceases to live in the natural body, all of a sudden, the spirit man is just standing there next to the corpse or the dead body. And he's looking down and saying, that's me. That's who I was. 
but I'm alive now because I've received Christ. See, I'm a new creation in Christ. I have the spirit of the life. You know, like Adam produced. See, that's what God said to Adam. Go out and replenish, reproduce yourself. I've created you in the image and likeness of God with the body, the soul, and spirit. But his spirit died. But the body and the soul still lives, and we are what? Eternal beings. So we either we're going to live eternity in heaven, or where's the other place? Hell, there's all the places. So Jesus came so that we don't have to die. So a person who doesn't know Christ, when they cease to exist, and the spirit comes out of that body, and they look at that body, I remember someone telling me they experienced it, it's a fearful thing. Because you know things are not right with you and God. And you know you can't go to heaven. And there's something pulling you down to the gates of hell. It's a scary moment. But we who died with Christ, Christ died. My death was on that cross with Christ. He died the penalty of sin for the transgression, the inheritance of death just like we have diseases sometimes certain attributes are passed down from generation to generation so death where is your sting because jesus took the pain of death so i don't have to suffer death that's why he spoke to martha when lazarus was in the grave martha if you believe in me ye shall live you won't die you'll have eternal life she said, oh yeah i know about the of the resurrection at the end of the age. And he says, no, I am the resurrection. Today, if you receive me, you receive my word, I give you eternal life. You're alive today when you receive me. You become what? Born from above. I'm a new species, a new creation by heaven, by heaven's seed. Whose body and likeness we are, yes, we are ambassadors of Christ. This new life is our source of life and being based on the new covenant that Jesus purchased with his blood. To form a new covenant, a new relationship with God, we are restored back to the family of God. See, we will, the Bible clearly says we were once at enmity, enemies of God because of their transgression. But not only transgression, but Adam made a league to abandon God and join himself with Satan, saying, I can promise you that you be more like God and have what God is not offering you. He just was a deception. And so he made this covenant and he lost his relationship with the life source was cut off. So Jesus says, we have this new life source, the resurrection life of Jesus, but you must be born from above so that death is done away with. So death no longer has dominion over our lives because our spirit is what? A dead spirit, meaning it's separated from God. But now we've been made right with God and we've been what? Given a new spirit. Pulls out the old and puts in the new life. But it's still in the same shell. <laughs> it's in the same shell. It's in the same body and soul. But a new spirit, a new man, a new creation in Christ. That which is stolen by sin is now restored by the grace and the power of the new covenant in relationship with Christ, because I live, you live also. See, because Jesus rose from the dead, death had no power over him because he was sinless. He bore the curse, the penalty of sin on the cross that we might have a new life, a new species. You know, like when Mary, we'll go into here. I think I got it here a little further down. So we're restored now by this grace and the power and into a new relationship with Christ who, were, who we now bear 
his image, the image of Jesus, the Son of God. He came down to this earth to reveal himself, man and God. And now we bear that image of Christ being born from above, born of the seed of Christ. And how could you say, how can this we be born of the seed of Christ? Well, it's I wrote it down here. God was showing me this. Just as Mary gave birth to Jesus by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came upon her and said, that which is conceived shall be holy, for he is the Son of God. So the seed, the life that came into Mary, conceived in the womb, was of God. So now the same seed, the life of Christ, is birthed in us. Just as he birthed Jesus in Mary's womb. But we already have flesh, so we don't need the flesh. But we have what? The spirit. The spirit that was in Christ. That which birthed by the Holy Spirit is now birthed in me. And you can receive the same birthing from above. Being born from above by the Holy Spirit. It's in the scriptures. So being born from above, born of the seed of Christ, just as Mary, who received the birth of Jesus. Born from above, born of God, not of the works of man. Conception is of God, conceived of God. So we've been created anew, sinless. I mean, I still sin in my soul, this realm. This body still has the drawing of the sinful nature. That's why God wants to renew our minds by the word of God, by the power of the spirit. Renews my mind, transforms my life by what? The power of God to, to transform us, to take us out of darkness into the light, into the kingdom, the kingdom of God. There's a new govern. There's a new laws in the new kingdom. We're not controlled by the system dominated by sin. Is it sin shall no longer have dominion over you and me. We can be set free from cigarettes, drug, alcohol, immorality. I mean, there is a temptation, but all I do is yield to Christ, the spirit of Christ, the life of Christ that's in me, a new power source. It's not self-will. It's empowered by the word of God. So you have been restored back into fellowship with God. Adam fell. His transgression broke the intimate communion and fellowship with God. We need to be restored. We need to be restored. Mankind needs to be redeemed from the curse of sin and brought back into a full relationship with God. So this is showing here that Adam had a relationship, could speak and commune with God every day. Even Moses, who went to the Mount Sinai and God visited him there, asked the 70 elders to come up and see God, hear his voice, commune with him, because God wants us what? To be a people now brought into the priesthood, we, we have a personal relationship with the living God. Not having a man who prays for us, who speaks to God for us. So now, what is God is saying? That the relationship that was broken, stolen by sin, the transgression, is now restored. So we are expected to come back into what? A relationship with God. And speak to him. He'll speak to us. God, that's why Jesus left the crowd and went on the mountain and prayed at night because he wanted that relationship with the Father. He says, I only do what the Father shows me. See, they had relationship. They talked about what he was going to be doing the next day. Just as you come home, you speak to your wife, how was your day, honey? What's your plans for tomorrow? And you know, you, you share about things that are gonna happen. And then God shows you things that He He'd like for us to do while we're here. We're his ambassadors, 
his representatives. So we have this relationship that he speaks to us. Sometimes it's in dreams, sometimes it's in a vision, sometimes it's in the word of God, like a word of knowledge, or his, he'll reveal through scripture what he wants us to do and to think. It's a developing a new relationship, such as Adam. How do you think Adam communicated with God? By the Spirit. The spirits both talked to each other and his mind understood who God was. Because we're born of him now. So just as a father and a mother have a relationship, the ability to communicate with the child, the same. God's making this available. That's why it says the spirit of prophecy, meaning it's a spiritual communication with God. A lot of people don't know anything about it, but God will develop that relationship. God is, is restoring that which was broken, that which has failed, and bringing us back to the first Adam, being a new man in the new image and likeness of Christ, born from above. We now share the life of the Son of God. See, there's a, a holiness, God's holiness. We belong to God. He put his life in us. So we should be holy because God is holy. And he wants the, us to praise him, worship him, and hear from heaven. And be able to what? Decree the blessings of God. We're to help bring deliverance. Remove the darkness and bring people into the kingdom of heaven. The gospel is the power of God to say, you can have a better life. And that life is in Christ. That life is being born, brought into the kingdom of God, where the, we inherit the blessings. We don't have to work at it. We're not on a social program that's being controlled. Controls the amount of money you can make. Uh, the sicknesses, the disease, the COVID, whatever it is, the world is tainted and it's manipulating the people. Mind control. He who the Son makes free. You want to be free? Join us tonight, Artemis Night. Join us on the Zoom meeting. Check it out, Healing Waters Fellowship. And we're going to be at the Healing Waters Fellowship. Me, my wife, and uh, some friends. We're going to be worshiping God. We're going to have a powerful meeting. We're having Rob Woods with us from Long Island. Crusading. Sharing the gospel. The power of God. To bring what? Deliverance. Many people are, are tormented by suicide. Fear. Unbelief. We're going to speak life. I know people who live in fear. And we pray and the Spirit of God releases them from fear, anxiety, worries. Restores our bodies. Get the back relationship with God. So we have become born from above, born by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. We become a new creation, born of the seed of Jesus, born by the Spirit of God into this new life. This new life which we receive is without sin. It cannot sin, nor transgress against God. We are now the Spirit, now of the Spirit of God in perfect unity. So we brought, been brought, that's why we, some people talk about praying in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. The Lord, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Romans 8, 1. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you and me free from the law or the power of sin and death. So now I'm in what? Unity, relationship with the what? Dunamis power. The power of God abides in us. The resurrection. It says the, heal, the spirit will quicken us. Quicken even our mortal bodies and our minds to think right. Renewing our minds by the power of God. This new life which we receive is without sin. Can't can not transgress against God. But if we do sin, we can ask for forgiveness. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us. In John, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. From all unrighteousness. And little Paul Peter talks about 
that we are partakers of the divine covenant, the divine nature of God through the promises of God by the Spirit. But many forget that they've been purged of their sins because they've disconnected from God. A holy God, a holy God lives in us, cleanses me, renews my mind, wants to help me take dominion and remove this and cast it down imaginations and every high thing, every temptation needs to be driven out. Say, stay out. Wicked thinking, wrong thinking. There's new life. I've been received it through forgiveness. We are created anew, just like the second Adam. We are the second Adam with Jesus. He called himself the son of man. The second Adam. He now is our life. Let us go on with God. Follow the life of Jesus today. Live by the spirit of God. Live by what? The love of God. When we love God, he's going to manifest, reveal his life. And I tell friends, you know, I've come to realize there's somebody living in here with me. The spirit of God. You can tell when this presence of God is, a, is upon you, just as in the prophets of old. But now the Spirit is in us, and the anointing moves in us and gives us words of life. Speak life and help and restore the kingdom into other people's hearts and lives. You have a wonderful day. We pray for healing. We pray for God's salvation, God's great mercy and forgiveness. God so loves you wants to restore you, just join us in the Zoom and on Friday the 26th. The presence of God heal you. I feel the presence of God touching you, restoring your minds, restoring your children. You can pray the perfect prayer of faith. God answers our prayers because he loves us. He loves you too.